What's up here SIGBiker? External versus internal cable routing. I'm smiling because I know many of you will once again put in the comments questions like Dan, why do you even talk about external cable routing? It's just past tense. Now we have internal cable routing both on road bikes and mountain bikes. That's the best solution and that's the only thing we're gonna see on the bikes in the future like you say about full suspension bikes. Well, I disagree with that and I will tell you why and it's important so just hear me out. At the end of this episode I'm gonna just talk about three tips for those internal cable routing users which will make your life so much easier. So uh, last year uh, at the Eurobike in Germany I talked to many brands but uh, just looking at one of the newest bikes of Sam brand uh, I said to the, to the manager of that brand uh, I don't like the internal cable routing on that bike I would prefer external cable routing and you know what he said he said because you're smart and here is why I've prepared for you two bikes uh, this one Canyon Andres lovely one with fully internal cables and the other one which is mine uh, will have external cables so we'll compare that uh, those two and you will see the differences I'm not saying internal cable routing is just you know trash it sucks never use it most of the expensive bikes will have it anyway uh, but if there was just one thing I want you to remember from this episode is that you should not forget about mo any models of the bikes just because they have external cable routing it can mean these are better in many ways so Yes, internal cable routing looks nice, looks clean and, and that's it, I would say. Some of you also say that uh, since we have internal cables, it is better for the cables because um, we, we keep our cables and housings away from the dirt. Wrong. This is really wrong and I'm going to prove it just in a second. But first problem I want to mention here is drilling holes in your frame, in especially on those carbon frames. This bike has three holes in the head tube, one on this side, two on the other side. Uh, these look very neat. By the way, some manufacturers, even on those super expensive bikes, don't do it very neatly. These are not so much reinforced around, so the carbon fiber construction here is, is not as strong as it would be. It would be with the guide for the external cables on the outer side uh, of on, on the surface of this frame. So this creates problem. Now look at the fork. And this is the funny part. Look at the fork. The left blade only has two holes in it. Now, don't you see the cable? Yes, we see the cable, the housing anyway, because it goes internally only for what? 15 centimeters, not more. So you can see the cable anyway. You will see the guide here, the hole. It comes in and then goes out once again, um, going to the caliper of the front brake. So <laughs> in order to hide 15 centimeters of the housing, we have two holes drilled in the fork. That's one thing. And the other, the other thing here will be the maintenance problem, which I'll mention in a second. Okay, we are now under the bike and here is something that I don't understand as well. This is the bottom bracket shell, right? So here we have the crank set, uh, two arms on both sides and huge forces uh, going through the bottom bracket. So we create a strong carbon fiber uh, bottom bracket shell and then make a huge hole in order to make this internal cable routing port. Um, so we want to have something strong and stiff and something that all the manufacturers will brag about and then we cut off a huge amount. This is not just a hole, this is huge, uh, huge amount of uh, carbon which is cut off here so that we can use this port for routing the cables which I will show you in the tricks. And there we have same situation, we have a hole on the uh, chain stay on the left side, non-drive non -drive side so that the housing will uh, be guided to the caliper brake and right here we have the uh, the um, hole for the rear derailleur housing so this is how it looks like and here's what i think about it so do the bike with the internal cable routing look cleaner yes are we weakening the frame and the fork by drilling the holes there and making it more complicated to reinforce that place yes 
Do we need more time servicing the bike and maintaining the cables? Yes, because replacing the cables and the housings will be much more time consuming. I'm not saying it sucks, but it will be uh, much more time consuming. On some models it sucks, that's true. And uh, what do we do if you want to, let's say, replace the disc brake? Well, we, we won't be able to route the caliper through the frame. We have to cut the housing. And finally, are, do the cable have better water, mud and d dirt protection? No. And here is the example, front derailleur cable. This is the absolutely worst way of guiding the cable uh, in terms of um, dirt protection. All the water, all the dirt comes down with the cable, right? And it's very good for Kenyan. They, they gave us some seal, a rubber seal down there. But since this is the internal cable routing, it will go down there and the mud and rust can really, really be created uh, and accumulated uh, inside there and you don't have good access to clean that. You don't have almost no access, uh, any access to, to clean that. So that's the worst thing that you can do for your cable routing. If it was the external one, I will show you how it looks like. This is quite neatly done by Canyon, but on the Scott foil I showed you, and it's one of many examples, the housing does not end here, but goes deep into the chain stays. You know what that means? That means that uh, on my buddy's bike, there was lots of water coming into the frame. And when I wanted to replace those cables and housings, the end cap or the ending of the housing just left there so it was left there the only thing i could do was to drill it super super precisely and slowly and carefully i was drilling the carbon frame i mean i wasn't drilling the frame but uh, drilling the the uh, cable and uh, ending in order to remove it so it was really difficult and it was only because there was the internal cable routing and here just to show you that uh, different brands uh, will use different solutions and Cannondale used on the Super 6 EVO uh, partially internal and partially external cable routing but let's see the FSI now fully external cable routing means no holes in your precious head tube Unlike on this couple where, where Canada also uses internal ones, but here I have externals. And there you go. Fully external housing for the front brake. Really easy. You know, replacing the caliper or the brake even, the whole brake uh, on this bike would take just a couple of minutes because of those nice guides which allow the fork to work also. And there's just one zip tie uh, that we cut uh, down there at the bottom and the job is done. Here is the bottom bracket shell. What we have here is some nice slider here. Uh, we can also route the cable for the front derailleur. Uh, and some of you would say, all right, I got you, Danny. That's the place where the dirt and the mud and, and everything will just uh, come to and it will make our shifting worse. Well, wrong again. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's all open for the dirt and mud and, and, just, and water and anything. Um, but since it is open, uh, the dirt doesn't really put so much uh, more friction on those uh, cables. That's one thing. The other thing is also that it's super easy to clean, which is a great advantage in my opinion. And here once more we have the external cable with the guide here. Um, replacing this part, for example, uh, of the housing, super easy. Replacing whole cable, super easy. Inspecting the cable, just look at this. Uh, I'm on the lowest gear, now shifting down the cassette without pedaling. My cable is loose, now I can just open my housing without any problems and move it around. I would uh, first clean this part, just uh, move it uh, around the, the cable and see how it looks like. Also, I could loop this part uh, of the cable within three minutes, no problem, if it is the external cable routing. So there you go, the external cable routing doesn't have to be past tense, it has many advantages over internal cable routing 
and I do prefer external one uh, you just decide for yourself now you have now you have like a deeper knowledge about it and now those promised tricks for the internal cable routing users and I have four of these believe me rare ones and the first one is super rare so please hear me out read the manual not many cyclists not even uh, you know guys in the workshops in your local store read the manual because they think okay this is the 50th or 100th bike that I make and I will know how to route those cables no read the manual because sometimes uh, the manufacturer will give you some good tips for your frame specific okay all right so number two when you replace the derailleur cable both front and rear don't simply remove the cap and just remove it but first connect the, this end of the cable with another cable and when removing this one you will route a new one or just some used one through the frame then you can once again connect the the second one to the third one the one you want to have on your bike and easily go back through the frame uh, i would use even uh, like the electrical uh, tape for that reason you just have to do it very neatly so that it won't be uh, too thick and it will go through all those guides and with the third trick we go back to the uh, bottom bracket shell many 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 brands like here canyon or scott on the foil bike uh, i showed you have this port this huge hole when you remove the cables you will be able to open this up and so the new cables will easily go um, go through this hole then you can just guide it through this little plastic thing and then put it back together so before you start using the hammer or some other or bad words and make sure you don't have or you have uh, perhaps this part which is removable and then you will see a huge hole there and you will be able to do it easily here on the super 6 evo we don't have such a port so uh, the cables will just go here inside the bottom bracket and i've heard of some people who would not read the manual and route the cable under the spindle and so the cable would finally cut off the spindle have you heard of that so the manual says uh, strictly the cable has to go to go over the spindle of your crankset so make sure your bike doesn't have per perhaps such tricks as this one and the final trick is use gravity whatever you need to do with your cables however it should go sometimes on the top tube to the rear brake sometimes just on the main tube down tube uh, to the derailleurs use the gravity all right so put the bike in the position maybe sometimes you would need somebody to help you but if you use gravity the cable <laughs> will really work with you so here are my experiences and thoughts about external versus internal cable routing. I'm just about to begin the steel bike project with fully externally routed um, cables, which I'm so happy about. Let me know what are your experiences and your suggestions on this matter. Thanks so much for visiting Sigbiker Studio and I will see you soon. Bye bye.